This is Illinois Radio with Biko, Illinois Jones, and Pretty Riot going down right now. Yo, Rick, you did it again, Mark. State your name. Hi. Oh my so God. Right. Hey. Hello. Well, I was calling in because I had a question to ask you, Mr. Aziz. Go ahead hey. with your question. Hello. Hello. Go ahead. What, what's your name? My name is Jennifer. Hey, Jennifer. And you wanted to ask Aziz a question? Yes, I did. Well, go ahead and ask him. All right. <laughs> So where did you get the inspiration, you know, to write some of your songs? Um, that's a very good question. Um, so I don't really write, per se. I quit writing, like, a couple years ago just uh-huh. because I used to see, like, Lil Wayne and stuff freestyle a lot. So, I, like, I started implementing that a lot. So I don't know, just, like, just life in general, you know? Just, like, my, for instance, like, my song Mood was about this girl. I know, you probably figured that out already. <laughs> but yeah, mm-hmm. it was just like <clears throat> the vibe at that time that I had with her and I was like, you know, it just came from that. So I, I kind of, that gives it like the authentic twist to it. So I can, I can like, cause you can like, you know, if you have a conversation with somebody, you can remember clearly like what, like what transpired. So yeah, that's, that's how I usually just go, go about it. Yeah. So yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Thank you. What's your Instagram? My Instagram is Jennifer underscore Squirrel. Thank you for tuning in and thank you for calling in. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, nice Jennifer. Time. You too. Thank you. I mean, we we could even give my <laughs> brothers a proper. <laughs> <laughs> she was thirsty. <laughs> she said, "I have a no, question." No, that's the homie. That's the homie. Shout out to Jennifer. Though. Shout out to Jennifer. Hey. She called ASAP, and we had another caller. We had two callers <laughs> call calling back so, to back. So hey, those so that call, call, call back, call yeah, back. It was like five minutes. Like oh, what's, the, what's the phone number? Who knows the number by heart? Oh, uh, I know it now. Go ahead. It is seven zero eight three one four nine nine one five. Okay, I was practicing. No, so let's <laughs> let's reverse things back one time. <laughs> so as always, we bring you guys the illest guests in town and around and globally, you yeah. know. And today's special guest that's bringing the illest noise is the homie Aziz. Bruh, how you bruh, doing? Bruh, bruh, bruh. I'm doing good. How you? How you all doing, man? I just want to tell you for a whole week we've been calling you Aziz. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they, they have been calling. Oh man, we just been like, yo, we interviewed like Aziz. <laughs> <laughs> no comment. Yeah, I've heard, I've heard it all, man. It's okay. So, it are you mixed? Like, right, what's oh no, I'm just Nigerian, man. Nigerian. Up Nigerian man. I mean, not you, not born. just Nigerian. That's I mean, powerful. Yeah, you know. But yeah, I was born here, but then I went back to uh, Nigeria for high school and all. So I left oh. when I was about like seven. Okay. So yeah, and I came back in <clears throat> 2012, and you know, we were riding this musical. Journey since then, so. Like so, so how was? Go ahead. Oh, cause how no, go was ahead. high school in Nigeria? Cause I mean, I clearly went to high school in America. So yeah, what's the difference? <laughs> what's the difference? <laughs> what's the difference? Well, dang, you didn't Man, really go um, to high school in America. Oh, uh, jeez, a lot of discipline, and it was even way worse for me because I went to a military school. So that was like, <laughs> wow, <laughs> that was an experience. But yeah, we look back, we look back at it and laugh. So yeah. That's What's the hip hop scene like in an underground scene like? So, like in high it's school, that in high school or like it just, it just in Africa? Okay, so I feel like Nigeria per se, we don't appreciate rappers as much, mm. but we have a lot of lyrical like you know, because like everybody like in Nigeria that we're more more focused on the like the whole Afrobeat scene with Wiz Kid and David was like the front runners and we obviously. We obviously have like people like Kiss Daniel. It's a whole bunch of, but as far like as far as like rap, nah. We have people, but it's not like they don't get as much as credit they need. So if, as for Africa, who, as for Africa, who's putting off for uh, for hip hop? I would say South Africa. You guys, I don't know, maybe you guys have heard about uh, Casper Yoves. There's uh, this is other guy called AKA Two. This I've heard called, that before. Yeah, AKA is really dope. Nasty C's dope. Uh, Questa is dope. 
it's it's yeah, but I I, I say per- personally like South African hip hop, you won't even know. It's like there's no difference. This is basically like the beats are dope, like the production, wordplay, out of this world, like. Pfft. So it's just pretty much lacking support. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah, basically, because Nigeria right now, if you're not doing something they can dance to. Pfft, yeah, they're not trying. Yeah, they're, they're and trying. Like you might you might have a little bit of you know, and it and then it kind of forces a rapper to become commercial in Nigeria. Mm. So you oh. have to make something. You know, it kind of messes with your your vibe. Let's say you're let's say you're a conscious rapper. Okay, and you're you're trying to do that in Nigeria. It's like it's like okay, it's not gonna work. <laughs> I mean, your, your homies gonna support you. They are gonna hold you down and all, but it's like with the people not like they're gonna you're not look at you like clubs. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, exactly. I feel like that's exactly. almost like the hip hop scene in America. Yeah. Nah, that's like nah, here. Nah. See, people like people have have like a little platform to thrive here, because like I don't know, you, are you, are you probably guys know um, Saba. Yeah, yeah. he doesn't he doesn't Saba. make music for club. He just makes music that he can you know mm-hmm. and people can relate to. In Nigeria, we don't really it's not really a lot of you know. I mean, I mean, we do have this new wave coming in. It's like uh, Odunsi and uh, Santi, and their music is not kind of like it's kind of like alternative in a in a way because it's not. R&B and it's not like Afrobeat so it's like it's in its own lane, lane. it's own so, genre and those kids those guys are like the island kids like the cool kids so people from like the street in Nigeria they won't really know know how to vibe to it so it's kind of <laughs> see well, what I like about what you're you're mentioning is you still you know you still have knowledge of what's going on oh yeah definitely like the music there definitely. some people don't you know they leave from other countries and things of that nature and don't have no type of knowledge on what's going on with the music scene or just in, in general definitely. and you you mentioned some names I've never heard of yeah yeah but at least you mentioned the, the world name. is pretty it's pretty you know <laughs> what's like the, the like music make me realize damn there's talent out there like everywhere like we have guys from Tanzania Ghana too. We have this guy called um, Sarkodie. I probably heard of him. Hey, there was this, there was a time there's like this whole Azonto wave. You probably guys probably heard of the dance. People people were doing it in the club Azonto, okay. but that spread over everywhere. And uh, Fuse too. Fuse was popping that that with his whole yeah. He started an Azonto wave too. But yeah, Fuse is pretty pretty big in in the, in Europe. Wow. So yeah. Just put Africa's us just, right, just, just put, put us, us on. on. Yeah. Yeah. Of, I'm trying to keep up and you and, and <laughs> find the answer. That's okay, man. Like, <laughs> I can, I can he over here Googling. Man. He like, yeah. you know you can't spell none of them. Y'all put me on to low key. Y'all put me on to some, some artists when I hey. get you guys. Really? Yeah. That's that's what we I, like. I, I, I saw um, this um, RG Valentine. Shout out, oh, Audrey. shout out Audrey. Yeah, shout she's out. great. Hey. She can sing. Hey, yeah, shout out to her real quick because she's been doing her thing with her Man, performances she lately. Can she can sing. Performing yeah. everywhere. Yeah, yeah. She's, she's been performing a lot of places. A- yeah. Any other any other artists you've seen? You know, from our platform. Um, I, I think it was uh, I forgot her name. Um, I just watched her interview today. Actually, uh, she was she was also an R&B artist. Um. She's planning to drop her. Uh, L'Oreal. L'Oreal. Yeah, L'Oreal. 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 Okay. She's planning to drop yeah. an album like July seventh or this month. Actually, she said she was planning to drop an a album. drop of album. That sounds like a uh, Dej Monet. Dej Monet. Dej Monet. And I wasn't yeah, even here. Like, How y'all not know that? And I wasn't even here. Because look, we all said you had, to, you had to pay a little more attention since you yeah. was listening, yeah. right? Because we was here. Because you, you tried to ask a question that we already asked, so you had to listen even harder <laughs> after that. Let's not forget. That is true. <laughs> There's a lot of you know, dope artists in Chicago, so it's like, damn. So let's talk about Beast on the Beat. Okay, yeah, yeah, let's talk about that. You produce? Okay, no. So when I say Beast on the Beat, not, oh, okay. I'm on the Beat, not actually making, making the Beat. beat. Got you. <laughs> okay. People kind of, you know, yeah. mix that up, but it's, I like it, so it gets them. You got the me. Would you ever try producing? Oh, yeah, definitely. I have an ear. I have a good ear. So, like, this whole, like, when I'm starting this whole musical journey, you know, like everybody, I wanted to rap. You know, like da 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 da. You know, I was sitting with the homies. Oh, okay, let's rap. You know, and I was very good at like mimicking these like songs, like knowing lyrics. I was spot on with it. But the thing I noticed is I was very good at making hooks. So I was like, I sat down one day to myself, like, I mean, you, could, I mean, you could be a rapper, but like, why did you just sing? Like, it, I mean, you've already dope with it, so, so. I eventually just diverted from the whole rap scene, and and my friends they always like used to come to me like, oh yo, can you write me this hook? Da, da, da. And you know we were like it was like a group of small friends, so we were like pretty close. So 
I started doing that. So like, I basically learned how to sing myself. If that makes any yeah. sense, it, it makes sense. You taught yourself yeah. how to, yeah. And it sounds silly, but yeah, no. I, I really did because I was Muslim at the time, so I didn't have, I, I didn't have like, uh, you know, all this. You know how people learn in the church, and you learn so much. Go to choir practice. Muslim is not really like that. It, you know, just go to the mosque, pray, and I mean, you do sing, but it's it's not as much That's, detail yeah. as the choir in the church. Right. So, yeah. so the, yeah, I had to do that. So I li- I just used to listen. Literally, I listened to like Chris Brown do something like, okay, you, I'm try that. Let me try it. Yeah, I'm, for the <laughs> uh, Bruno Mars do something. Okay, I'm try that. Okay, uh, Luke James do something. I'm like, okay, I'm try ties do something. Party next door. Okay, so that's how I just you know slowly, slowly started. That's dope. Yeah, yeah, and that's, that, that was dope. if you listen to all the artists he mentioned, that was super versatile. Yeah. Oh, different ranges, yeah. different ranges. Man, from party next door to people. Chris Brown. Yeah, yeah. Luke James too. Yeah, right. well, I heard Luke James. James. Luke James. Okay. Luke James. Right. Luke James on, uh, I think it's Ro James. Man, Ro, Yeah, I think Ro, Yeah, he is Ro James too. <laughs> man, those t- Rick James somewhere. Rick James. <laughs> Yeah, was Rick James man. technically a singer? Yeah. 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 He, he, he was. Man, Rick James. Yeah. That's singing. Yeah. Girl, yeah. Yeah. Fire, yeah. And yeah. Fire and Desire. Yeah. Yeah. Fire yeah. and Desire. Yeah, yeah. that's true. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. All right, you know my age just showed. How old? I mean, you seen hey. Baby Boy before. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, you know what? We, we actually, let's get into a quick music break. And, um,. This music, bro, we gonna play real one, my brother. First of all, Biko been talking about this song since I walked in. He walked in and he said, hey, he said, did you hear real one? I'm gonna tell you something funny after the break. <laughs> oh, hey, I was gonna say, actually, you wanna share right oh, now before we yeah, get into it? That was actually like the, I think that was the least liked song by me. Yeah. Well, that was your least liked song? Yeah, I really like nah, I actually like that song. I was very like, I was like, oh, okay. I think man. that's every artist. But then again, we, we yeah. knew. It's, it's like, every artist. It was like, it was gonna be like. A girl's favorite song. I know a couple girls. Like, oh, it's I a love male this. favorite songs too. I don't know. He left. Yeah, he felt like, first he felt left out. He like, hold on, <laughs> I like it too. Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, bro, but yeah, this, it was a least favorite joint right here. Yeah, somebody said, Aziz. Wow, <laughs> he touched me. <laughs> I know. Like, was it like, okay? uh, Was it uh, the caller? Oh no, no, someone else. Someone else. So, so yeah. Well, let's actually get into real one right now here on Illinois Via Logic Radio. Don't go nowhere. Yeah, like I said, it's always you bring in the illest guests from around the globe. And today we got, say your name for me one more time, my brother. We got Aziz. I don't want to mess it up. No, it's okay, man. It's okay. AKA, we used to call him Aziz. Yeah. (laughs) Now we got it. We got it locked in. I mean, is that your, is that your government? Okay, so it's my Muslim name. Okay, but the actual name is not like on my government name. So, Cause so when I came back in 2012, I, my name, real name is, well, my government don't, name. Don't say it. Yeah, <laughs> now I'm gonna say it. So for people that know, <laughs> it's Ola Likon Akinshola. But like people just, I took, I used to tell people to call me Lakon, and the teachers used to mess that up. Lakem, Lakem. I'm like, you know what? Just call me Z's. Like, oh, yeah, I can do that. I can do that. Yeah, okay, all right. Yeah, they probably messed that up too. Yeah. <laughs> so be like, can you say your name for me one more time? I just like, I like hearing Nigerian names. Oh, Olalikon Akinshola. Does your name have a meaning to it? Um, Olalikon means my wealth has increased by one. Well, just literally, my my wealth has increased, and my last name means, um. I think it's something about warriors. I forgot. Warriors, something. I'll, I'll give that to you. Hey, well, we got warriors. We know <laughs> you a fighter. That's cool. Though. Yeah, yeah. You feel? And I'm happy you brought back 2012. So 2012 was the year you came back. Yeah, I came back from um Nigeria. Nigeria, and we, we got another caller. Hold that call one one, one time. Okay. So you came back from Nigeria in 2012, mm-hmm. and you know this music was for you. Like, what actually boosted? You know, not boosted, but. What actually got you interested in, in starting your music career um, in 2012? I, I was saying, hold the call. Not, not, he <laughs> declined. Not I, 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 Jones straight. <laughs> declined. I was trying to figure hey, out the in. password so I could put it on the silent thing. Oh, oh there we go. Oh, uh, kind of figured. Um, I, I kind of always knew it was like this. This is what, like this is 
where I'm most comfortable at and where I'm most talented at. I mean, obviously, there's tons of things to grow from and, you know, improve in. But I kind of always knew at the back of my head, like, this is what I want to do. So when I came back, I, I saw this, uh, I think it was this video, this guy called it, uh, this really dope singer, actually, too. His name's SLV. I saw his video, <clears throat> and it was, uh, it's this song called Firewood. And it was it was really dope. Oh yeah, baby. Oh yeah, Bobby Jones. It was like a really okay. Let them know. It was like a really <laughs> Afro beat. And I saw the video. I was like, I I, I saw it. I was like, yo, this is dope. First of all, and I, and I thought, like, yeah, we can really do this. We can we can rock this. We can rock this. So I just you know I spent a lot of time back then, like like after I stopped writing in 2012. So I used to write a little bit, and then one day I just I hooked up with this uh, Mo Beats, and we made a song called Jeje. And that song, I didn't write the second verse for it because my friend had an open verse and then I had a hook. And it was just basically impromptu. Everything we did that day was impromptu. And I just hopped in the, studio, I just hopped in the booth. I was like, okay, we're just going to roll with it, you know. So ever since then, I just quit writing. And then I just go off pure vibes, you know. So, yeah, after then, it's just been slowly, slowly but surely getting there, you know, working, dropping projects and stuff like yeah. that. Do you feel like it's easier to not write because you're singing opposed to if you were actually rapping? Uh, No. I feel like uh, it has its pros and cons Mm -hmm. because I I listened to, um, I watched this Jay-Z interview one time. He said... The rap is poetry video? Uh, I think so. Yeah. Because he was telling me, he, he you know, he doesn't write too as well. Mm-hmm. He said, it's good, but it's also a bad thing. Because once you forget, like, whatever vibe, whatever note you were singing, it's gone. Like, it's just, pss. So he said, he's created a, a whole new generation of bad rappers. I don't even hear him say that, like, in a joking way. Because, like, he, be, like, obviously, if you, uh, like, as rappers, you have to practice practice and practice makes perfect and yep. he believed that writing constantly is only going to get you better and better and better and better and better and better so as for singing I don't know because you know we have like these days we have like a lot of dope singers you know Chris Brown shout out to Chris Brown and the rest they don't really write most of their songs yeah. so not to discredit yeah, them but it's like you know we have a lot of songwriters so it wouldn't it, it, it doesn't matter as much I don't, I don't, if, I, if that makes sense. So, I guess it's about the same level. So, because like, there's, I forgot like tons of stuff. But, like, damn, I'd be, I'd be sitting and sitting and trying to remember, like, oh, how did I sing this? That's why my uh, voice recorder is like my best friend. Like, mm. it has yeah. everything. Oh, for those listening, because <laughs> that's true. That's, yeah, that's, the, yeah, that's, that's, that's the best way to, to remember. Yeah. Uh, you know what's going on. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's my best friend. So. So and, and as rappers too, it'd probably be the same thing because like I remember I watched um, Wayne record the Carter Three like like his tour bus. Mm-hmm. I saw that documentary. And I used to be, I used to think it was a, like BS. Like come on, you, I know you write some stuff. And I watched him record, and he was actually making mistakes. He was mm-hmm. like, "Oh, cut that." Yep. And I'm like, "So you're like, telling really me this man this. rapped all this off his dome?" Yep. So I was like, okay, nah, I, can, I can do that. So basically, do, I started doing that. Do you feel like, you know, with you not writing it, it made you a better artist? It made me way more creative. Like, I can, it's like, it's, it's, it's like super easy now. Like, it's almost like yeah, you, two if, and two together. Because like, if you don't use it, you're going to lose it. Yeah, yeah, it's really, really. <laughs> and me and my friends, we usually <laughs> just play beats at the crib, just freestyle. Just who's the best freestylers? Um, um, it's it's uh it's one of my friends. Uh, his name's Farouk. He's he's hit. Uh, you could talk about he's one tough, one tough rapper. Y'all watch out for him. But yeah, he's really good at freestyling. And for like melodies and stuff, I I say me another one of my friends called uh, Toyo C, Gennaro. This is everybody. Just you know, we have all these vibes. Everybody's like different because I have like. Cause they think they think I'm the R&B guy, so I have this whole twist I put to it, and there's Afro beats too. When I put the whole Fuji, and it's like 
you know, everybody's just like, you know, surfing off of each other. So and it's good that you actually um, put yourself around people that that's in the same stature as you. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah it yeah. brings so much more of a, you know, creative yeah, environment. Yeah. Right. And, you know, when everybody when everybody see what you see or just does what you do, it's just so much easier and better. Um, let's talk R&B. Do you feel like R&B is, is not what it used to be? Mm, it's the same thing. People just stop listening. So you feel like it's a dying art? Yeah. Really? It's not dying. I won't say dying, but people just... <clears throat> I, I think I forgot. I think it was Audrey's uh, thing. She made a great valid point in her uh, interview. It's like a rap, rap-dominated culture Industry. right now. Mm-hmm. So it's like... People be like, oh, r and dying out. Mom, no, it's not. It's really there. You're just not listening. I think BJ true. Chicago kid is there. Tyus is there. Party Next Door is there. Bryson Tiller is there. Uh, Luke James, Ro James. Uh, uh, it's it's so much. Brent Fayaz, um, SZA, uh, Daniel Caesar. We could go on and on. But Man. are you listening? Yeah. That's the that like because you know we're so embedded in this whole 808s and you know melodies and you know the trap. Yeah, trap like that's a whole nother thing. So we, pe- people are really, really into that. So we kind of people don't really want to, you know. I mean, people that love it, love it. That's why you have like that's why you have to be versatile. That's big facts, right? Yeah, there. because like people like Chris Brown, he can make a bedroom song easy, and he can also make what, 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 <laughs> <laughs> and he can, you know, he he can do anything. Any, any dancing, yeah. yeah. So I see yeah, what it's kind of ain't that die, die he, real quick in movies. Yeah. Oh, okay. Did you say yeah. what? <laughs> no shade, because that's my husband. I say, and he can act in that real fast direct movies. videos, paints. <laughs> He can do it. He can do she it. He say all. that real fast. Yeah. I mean, he can do it all. No shade um, to Chris Brown. Not like him. he can do it. Like that man is a genius. Like what? I will. I will want to ask you. Like, what's your ultimate goal? Um, what's your ultimate goal for your your career? Uh, man, it's a lot. I want to do so much. What's wanna, the first thing that come? Like, what's what, what's the first thing that come to your mind that you absolutely want to achieve? Um, first thing that comes to my mind is global domination. Global domination. Yeah, that's good. And then I want to actually, cause I I really like I I have a lot of like Afro beats, you know, vibes and Afro pop and you know stuff like that. So I want to, cause people like people use I used to do like like a lot of Afro beats, like all my older stuff, like you know dance hall kind of Afro beats. Mm-hmm. So when I came with this whole project, this move, we're gonna get into that. I know you said that. Yeah. But when I came with it to this project. <clears throat> A lot of people looking at me like, what is this? You, you, you can really do this? Like, you can really sing? Like, uh, you know, like, yeah, I just, you know. Some people didn't believe it. Like, nah, this is not, like, get out of here. Like, no. Like, nah. Because, you know, the whole Afro beats, it, it kind of like, I won't say it dumbs down my talent, but it's like. Whoa. It's like. How would you, it, how, how, how so? Because Afro beats right now, it kills me to say this. It kills me to say this, but. Some of the lyrics are very, very cliche. Mm. So it's too easy for you. Okay, I'm gonna put it like this. Have you, you know, how you listen to a, a, a trap song and you hear like, yeah. you know, it's like predictable. Yeah. After beats, we have like, oh baby, oh baby, Joe. Get down low, something like that. Oh, so it's like, low. yeah, it's like, opposite. it's repetitive. Yeah, 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 it's very repetitive. Okay, I got. But you. people are. They love it. They they love it. They don't care. What do you say? They don't man. care. I mean, look, look at the they mumble don't rap. Care. People love right, mumble they don't rap. Care. Like Whiskey, like I love Whiskey. I love David. Well, I think Whiskey has some songs that he's just like, "What's going on, bro?" Like, <laughs> <laughs> like I know, he, and then, and then I, I kind of from just from looking at like some of his songs, I know he freestyles a lot. Mm. So I like okay, and then some songs you like, whoa, like. You know his his well like the whole clump. I, I'm fun fact. I don't know if you guys heard uh, clump closer. No. Baby, come closer with Drake. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's yeah. yeah. Uh, it was no, it wasn't a more life. It was like a what? song. Wait, wasn't uh, that, that what is wasn't that a song featuring Drake? Yeah, it was featuring Drake. And it was all wasn't it on the radio. Yeah, well, it was on the radio. Yeah, a couple I times. I think I know what you're talking about. Yeah, he had a whole 
dope video and all. Yeah. Drake I, didn't show up for the video shoot. We don't know why, but okay. <laughs> but that was one of the songs that helped. Um, yeah, yeah, Spike Scar- is, yeah, I, Scar- that's how I think I, I think that's how I got to yeah, know yeah. Wizkid. And then Wizkid is a really uh, he's I think he's really close with uh, Ty Dolla Sign. Okay, that's, not, that's my that's another feature. Dope <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah like right. he's everywhere right now. So yeah, that's another dope. So that kind of I mean before it was still popping because um we already had like stuff like uh he Drake did the he actually hopped on the remix to one of uh, Wizkid's songs or Jewel Legba. And with Skepta, and then we had stuff like David O doing stuff with Meek Mill. So it was kind of like there in the area, like Africans knew about it. Some American, like Black Americans, knew about it. Like, oh, this guy's Nigerian, whatever. And we had like features here and there. We had like Rick Ross with P Square. So it was like in the air. But like that song that with that come closer, it was like okay, that's that was okay. His. Let's and then and I feel like the whole. I remember like a couple years ago too. I watched, I watched it a lot of interviews. It was this guy called Mr. Vegas. Yeah, he was saying like, he was saying that time, man. And he he just like, that's why I kind of learned this thing where, no matter how stupid that person may sound, just pick pick or pick something from it, because he was saying that time, and it was this was like, 2013. He was saying that time that uh, dance hall is the most influential music is the most influential genre of music. I was like, nah, nah. So maybe it may be a lie, but like, it's not that bad. I mean, I fast forward. Yeah, that's what I'm finna say, man. He he kind of he fast right. Forward to now, now, like, it never goes it's out. It never goes everywhere. out of style. It doesn't. It never goes out of style. Any party you it go to, it makes you feel good. I think that's why it's everywhere, timeless. everywhere. Even Afro beats now. Like once upon a time in London, you know, well in the UK, in the whole scene in the UK, we didn't have like it was just like they had like guard guard guard. I think you call it garage. Mm-hmm. And they had like uh, grime, and they had like you know a couple of singers here and there, and then out of nowhere, it, it comes this Afro swing movement. That's what they call it. So it's like Afro beats, but w- the person singing on that song or rapping is like talking about like drill stuff. Interesting. Yeah, it's very very interesting. So it's like I literally heard one song by Kojo Fonz. It's a robbery. It's a robbery. It's a robbery. Literally, just like that. You think about a robbery. Boy, you you, you you gonna make some some somebody <laughs> throw some pennies at you one day. <laughs> so you like making bedroom music? Hold on, you, you know what we we actually we gonna get into a quick music break and we gonna get into some more <laughs> Aziz. I said it right. Yeah, yes. yes, yeah, you got it. <laughs> um, we gonna get into his his recent EP mood. Um, and yeah, we gonna chat more about everything, man. But first, we finna get into Roll Marcel's. Oh, I said Marcel's. Romar Salas. Crew, also known as Plain Row, right here on Illinois Via Logic Radio. Don't go nowhere. They don't want to see me with the crew. They don't want to see me with the crew.